Steeling, you are the wildlife officer of the Cape Clare Bird Conservatory. Indeed I am, yes. Uh, which is run by? Uh, Birdwatch Island. Birdwatch yeah. Island. Yeah. Can you tell me what's happening here soon? Yep. Yeah. In the first two weeks of September, from the 2nd to the 14th, we are celebrating our 60th anniversary here at the Bird Ops. And we're having a festival where we have uh, events every morning and every afternoon and uh, a, a talk on a talk a, a slideshows on a variety of subjects from oh, like um, lag the lagoons of County Wexford and saving saving a Bermudan petrel uh, to uh, 60 years of Cape birding on Cape to all sorts you know it's a, it's a massive a massive range of subjects. And what size audience do you have for a festival like that? <laughs> it's a terrible, horrible question because I have absolutely no idea. I'm hoping we're going to get lots, but we could end up with none, we could end up with 10, we could end up with 100. I just have no idea. Until they turn up, we, 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 have, a, we have a few showing interest, maybe 30 or 40 inquiries. Um, and that brings me to my next question. And um, you live here in the um, bird observatory, in the bird ops, yeah. and you provide accommodation. So you would have a good idea how many people come to Cape every year for bird watching specifically. Can you quantify that? Oh, good lord! Um, yes, I can. Uh, here we would have maybe certainly for the first three weeks of October, we are full here. Until it's um, seven beds, uh, so that would be twenty to thirty people maybe. Uh, and the youth hostel has quite a few staying down there and the holiday cottages. Uh, generally speaking, the second week of October is our busiest time and there would be 30 or 40 bird watches here on the island. Okay, and why okay. at that time of year? It's because of the, historically is when most of the rarities have been found, which kind of coincides with when there's more bird is here. Okay. And I think the two are directly related. The more, the more bird watches, the more eyes are looking, the more birds are found. Very good. And yeah. Um, 60 years ago, how did it start? Uh, four young lads from Reading School, at Reading in Berkshire in England, approached the British Trust for Ornithology and said, "Where you know, we want to go to Ireland, where would they suggest going? And the British Trust for Ornithology said, uh, well, try Cape Clear, it's a little island off the southwest corner, that might be good. So they came here and they went back after their visit of a few weeks, staying here in the, what is now the Youth Hostel. They went back to the BTO and said, look, you've got to set up a bird observatory. And the BTO said, well, there you go. Make yourself a committee and off you go. <laughs> you do it. And it was funded, they paid for this building? Uh, th it was um, this building. We started, the, the OBS started in 59 in the youth hostel. And then when they came back in 1960 to stay in the youth hostel, that had been leased to Anoiga. So they had to find somewhere else. And they rented a building, which is now in ruins, at the top of the island, high up. They were there for two years, and then someone, who I've since found out who it is, but I've not been sworn to secrecy, someone gave an anonymous donation to the charity, the Bird Observatory Charity, to buy this place, buy this building. In and how did it come to be 62. in your ownership? I was not, I know, I, I just live here, I, just okay. not, no, I don't own it, I wish. Okay, I wish. but you've been here for how long? Uh, 21 years. Okay, yeah. and um, can you tell me about <coughs> your involvement or your interest? Do you, uh, the phrase would the phrase um, anorak fit? <laughs> no, of course not. No. Um, What's the passion? What's the interest? It's just a deep joy of seeing seeing birds and nature, not just the birds, but all of it. Um, and my job here as the warden um, and the wildlife officer enables me to show. We catch birds. We do a lot of ringing bird ringing where we catch birds and then we put, put a ring on the one of their legs which is has a unique number and then that means we can trace that bird if it's caught somewhere else or even if it stays here how long it's lived and one of the greatest joys I get is showing children the birds and seeing the ah, the wonderment in their in their eyes and their face you know when they see something and um, just I suppose the last question um, you came here 19 years ago um, 21 Sorry? 21 years I ago. I beg your pardon. <laughs> um, and when you came here, did you know you were here for good? We came for a year. Mm. Yeah, Mary, my partner and I, we thought we'd uh, maybe 
squeak a year out of it and uh, it's still here. And yeah. what is it about Cape? Oh, it's just lovely, it's magic. You know, we lived, before we came here, we lived in a little island called Lundy in the Bristol Channel. That's where I met Mary. And then when we left there, we went and lived on the North Devon coast. And it's just like West Cork. And so it's like home from home, really. But, uh, everyone's friendly. They, I think because we lived on an island beforehand, they accepted us as islanders. So, and it was good, yeah. Thank you. Great.